What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. In today's video, we're covering where do fish go in early spring, that winter to spring transition, where do they go, the movement, depending on the type of fishery you're fishing. Let's go. Early spring can be very, very difficult to pattern and track the fish. You guys have been fishing all winter. Matt just did a kind of a closeout winter video talking about how to how to uh, fish this time of the year. But now we're shifting gears. Now we are talking about early spring. Yes, it is not 100 degrees out right now, but it feels like spring is coming. You know those days where you just feel like you could take your hoodie off, you feel, you wish you could be in shorts and a t-shirt? That is what we're talking about. So this time of the year can be very unpredictable with weather changes and weather patterns, all that sort of stuff. Uh, but today's video, I'm gonna talk about where these fish go and some key baits that I like to use to really pattern those fish and stay on them as they move. Like I said, this transition can be very difficult to stay on these fish. Again, it's it's not warm out. You know, the water temps are still low, but these fish are starting to think about pre-spawn. They're starting to think about leaving their winter haunts, the, that those deep water homes where they've been all winter. Now they're starting that slow transition to the shallows. That is their end goal, right? They want to be in the backs of bays, backs of shallows, um, cuts, that sort of stuff, warmer water so they can get ready to lay their eggs and spawn. So this is that transition through the different fishery types I'm gonna talk about. We got, you know, river, current, delta, highland reservoir, lowland reservoir, and your natural lake. So I can, I'll kind of break it down and uh, kind of step through the process with you guys, where these fish have been, where they're going. Now understand that this process, this transition takes a while um, you know we still have weather coming you know right now I feel like I could be in shorts and a t-shirt but honestly tomorrow it might rain two inches or it might might snow we're talking about still freezing mornings but in the afternoon it is getting warm and those fish like that weather it's not based on on water temps per se it's more based on weather so also one other key thing about this transition is these fish never go backwards. So if they have left the, the area that you have been catching them all winter and they've started that transition, they will never go back. If a, a, a cold weather system comes in or a big storm comes in, they will hunker down in place. So follow along this transition, stay on them, find those key pieces of structure that they'll hang out on and, and hunker down on and you guys will be on them. So again, we're not talking springtime right we're talking the very very beginning of warm weather we're still in winter we're making that transition and uh, I like to to reaction fish this is a time to break down your fishery cover a lot of water try and find those fish wherever they are in that in that transition and stay on them and the best way to do that is cover a lot of water until you can find those schools of fish so let's start off by talking about natural lakes you know natural lake typically doesn't have a dam they're typically not that deep uh you know clear lake for example out in california that is that is a giant natural lake not very deep you know the deepest parts maybe 75 feet or so but most of it you know the whole north end is less than 25 feet of water and it goes it's like eight miles across so it's like a giant pond so where do those fish go in the winter they go out and sit in the depressions. They sit in the lowest, deepest area out in that bowl. If you have some steeper, sheer stuff, they're gonna be sitting on that rock wall down in deeper water. That's where they're gonna winter. But now that they're starting this transition, they're gonna take the shortest route to the bays and the cuts. And along the way, they're gonna stop on any key structure. So trees, uh, rock piles, sunk boats, anything like that. Those fish that are in their transition period, that is what those key spots are gonna be. That's what those fish are gonna sit on. So if you have the ability to have side imaging and you can waypoint that stuff, the best part about this transition is those key 
uh, pieces of a stru structure or anomalies, whatever you want to call them, they will replenish. So those, it's like those fish are just going to keep coming to you as they make their way to the backs of the coves. So natural lakes are fairly easy to figure out. Yeah, you have to cover a lot of water. Yeah, you have to do a lot of site imaging if you have it. But if you can find those key pieces of structure, that is gonna be where those fish transition. Again, they're coming out of those deeper holes. They're coming off of that sheer uh, rock, sheer walls, and they are looking for the nearest spawning cove that they can spend their pre-spawn and spawn in. Now again, these fish are gonna move in waves. We're, you know, we're not talking full on spawn right now. We're just talking the, the very beginnings. And like I said, if a weather uh, system comes in, they're gonna hunker down in place. And uh, again, reaction baits are gonna be your key in all of these types of fisheries. That way you can cover water, really break it down and figure out where those fish are transitioning from and the routes they're using. If there are ditches or some kind of creek channels, you know, a lot of natural lakes don't have a lot of uh, deep, creek channels or deep river arms if you can find little depressions or little you know say you're you're fishing you know 15 to 20 foot but there's a little creek channel that's uh, 16 feet you know just a, a foot or two deeper and it goes and leads all the way back to a cut that is going to be like their highway they use to transition so look for those google earth you know get on google earth do some research a lot of those types, natural types of lakes won't have, like I said, big river arms with main lake points or secondary points. So look for those creek channels, look for those little areas that are a little bit deeper and that's gonna be their highway to get the shortest route to the backs of those coves. Now let's talk about a river system, something with current or a delta, something like that. You know, typically that moving water is not gonna warm up as quickly as a natural lake or a, a lowland reservoir. So again, this transition is gonna be even slower in those, those current fisheries. What you are looking for, you are looking for little fingers off of the main river channel, little backwaters, things like that that allow those fish to get out of that colder current and move up into the creek arms or the backwater uh, mouths. Those fish are gonna pull up out of that current and sit right there. Now, they're not gonna go all the way to the back. Same thing with all of these types of fisheries I'm gonna talk about. This movement is not like main channel, back of the cut. Unless you have a storm with a lot of river, you know, a lot of current coming in, a lot of uh, tributaries or, or fresh water coming in the backs of these cuts, they will jump up and go for that moving water. But typically, they're not gonna move out of your current into the very back of the bay. That is where they're gonna spawn, but that's not where they're going right now. They're just gonna jump up and sit in the mouth of that backwater, mouth of that tributary where they have deep water access to back off if need be, or they you know find that piece of structure that they could hunker down on in case a storm comes in. But again, this is a slow transition, but that's what you're looking for. Now, if you are, are on a system that doesn't have a lot of backwaters or a lot of, um, you know, kind of, tributaries and little fingers off of the main river channel, then look for current breaks, look for laydowns, look for little bends in the river where it creates eddies and creates those current seams and areas where those fish, those big fish, because that is key, that is what we're targeting, right? We're not targeting the little bucks. We want those big girls that are coming up for that pre-spawn. So those fish need an area to get out of the current, warm up and start preparing for the spawn. So again, that's that's your current situation, that's your river situation, deltas, things like that. Obviously delta, when you have a tidal system, uh, that gets a little bit more complicated, but if you can find those backwaters on uh, rising tides, that sort of stuff, you will find where those fish will position at the mouths of those openings. All right, you pond fishermen are probably thinking, that's great, but how does this apply to me? You know, ponds are, are any of these types of fisheries just on a smaller scale. You know, there are ponds that have sheer wall, walls that are very deep. There are ponds that are natural. There are ponds that don't have dams. So any of this information that I'm explaining to you, the fish are gonna move the same way, just on a smaller scale. You know, if you have laydowns on your way back to the, the shallowest part of the pond where those fish are gonna spawn, 
same type of thing those fish are going to key in on those pieces of structure on their way to the backs of the coves now let's talk about highland and lowland reservoirs and then we'll go over some baits but uh probably the two most common uh fisheries are your highland and lowland reservoirs now we've done videos in the past about how to tell the difference uh, but to keep it simple to to uh to uh, not go too in depth on it a highland reservoir typically is steep and deep has long river arms sheer walls a real narrow but tall dam pretty much they filled in a canyon uh, a river system in a canyon real short dam but really tall really deep and you're gonna have long arms with very sheer walls on the flip side your lowland reservoir that's gonna be a real long dam you know, sometimes you'll have multiple dams on one fishery. They're not gonna be very tall, but they're gonna be long. You know, you could fish riprap on a dam that's a mile, mile and a half long. That that type of fishery is gonna have uh, more just kind of foothills, kind of a feel, kind of humps and not real steep arms, deep arms that go way back. You're typically gonna have, like I said, humps, a little bit of creek channels and stuff, but you're not gonna have those long tapering points that break off arms that sort of stuff now let's talk about um, how the fish are gonna move in each of them because they're a little bit different you know let's talk about let's talk about the lowland reservoir first and then we'll go into the highland reservoir now the lowland reservoir fish out on the winter have been out on the deep side of humps they've been off the edges of uh, uh, creek channels if you have them you know they're out there on the edge of that stuff now to get from where they're at where they've winterized where they've uh, that, that where they've lived all winter and where they're gonna go they're gonna use the tops of the humps they're gonna use the edges of secondary points if you have them they're gonna keep that kind of that deep water close by they're gonna go up over the humps you know, if it's a, a key piece of structure on an island top or a hump, that is money. Because again, this transition is slow. They're not going to do it overnight. You know, as those weather systems come in, they're going to hunker down. So if you can find, again, get on Google Earth. Look at where you fish. Look at where the closest uh, spawning bay or cut is going to be. And just look on it. You can almost see, you can tell which route they're going to go. Especially if you have... Um, you know one of the uh, topographical maps of the lake before it was filled with water you can see where those little deeper channels are where they come close to those humps that sort of stuff is all key but get on google earth do some research and you'll see kind of how these fish are gonna move how they're gonna transition again slow process but if you can find those key pieces of structure right in line with that transition that is money now again the end goal is spawn right the end goal is to be in that shallow backwater cut that warm water where they can lay their eggs and spawn highland reservoirs same thing lot more choices to fish you know when you're thinking of a highland reservoir you're thinking of a long i mean they're they're big right typically they're big they have long arms with lots of main lake points and secondary points so from the main lake to the spawning cut or cove could be miles and there might be 10 15 20 50 points secondary points on their way back to that cove so you're gonna have to bounce move quickly point to point to point to point you know look at the the topographical stuff look at Google Earth um, fish your your winter spots where you're catching them out on main lake off of that main tapering point that main lake point that separated the arms now they're going to start bouncing from point to point to point working their way back to that cut now the cool thing is it's a pretty easy transition once you find those fish again you're covering lots of water i'll talk about baits in a second you're covering lots of water once you find those fish you can if you're catching the the small bucks if you're catching like tiny fish back up the process just a little bit go a point or two or five back and that's where you find 
the uh, the big ones. So you can kind of work your way. Once you find these fish, you can work your way along these points because you know where they're going next. You're always a step ahead of them once you find them. So Highland Reservoirs, find those secondary points, you know, ones that have uh, tapering points that have stumps or rock piles on them. Those are going to be those key spots where the biggest fish stay. Hopefully that makes sense. You know, the one thing I want to emphasize is once you build a pattern, you know, you always hear the pattern in bass fishing. Once you realize, hey, these fish are, are on the third or fourth secondary point from the back, you can go to a different arm and duplicate that same pattern. Once you find what stage they're in and where they're at, you as a fisherman can duplicate that no matter where you are on that body of water. So great time right now to get out, cover water, move with those fish, figure out where they're going, and next year it'll be even easier. Baits, uh, I'll talk about real quick. I'll probably have another video here in the next couple days talking about baits specifically. Um, let me un untangle some of this stuff. Again, I talked about moving baits. You know, if you're trying to find these fish and you're sitting there shaking a drop shot or you're shaking a shaky head or dragging a jig, you're not covering a lot of water. So you don't have time to find those fish. And yeah, you might find them with the drop shot, but now you don't have time to move and check other patterns, other areas that match that pattern. So you wanna stay moving. These fish, it's go time, right? It's not it's not spring yet, but they're they're wanting to feed up. They're wanting to move. They're thinking about spawning. So throw the moving baits. You know, throw your glide baits, your Alabama rigs. Uh, how do you talk about early spring without talking about a lipless crank? You know, if you're if you're fishing the uh, the reservoirs, the highlands, the lowlands, and you're fishing that transition, that secondary point that's near that the deep water near that that mouth of that cut you know throw a deep crank and just like every video i will link my favorite baits favorite colors next video i will go completely in depth about why i fish each but uh chatter baits lipless cranks square bills glide baits um, they are all special this time of the year they allow you to cover a lot of water and really key in on those fish so hopefully this video helps guys if you learned something please give us a, th a thumbs up Remember to subscribe to our channel. We do three videos a week to help you guys figure out these fish and put them in the boat. As always, guys, we appreciate you. Have a good one.